We're in the book of Daniel, chapter 12. And I want to read verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And then we'll go over here to verse uh, 9. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Good morning. I want to talk to you today, this little walk and talk here about an increase in knowledge, not sound doctrine. Started out there in the book of Daniel, and the Bible prophesies that there would be an end times increase in knowledge. Knowledge shall increase. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. And uh, definitely, uh, that has happened here in the last, you might say, 100 years. Um, unlike any other time in history. There's never been a time in history when people have been able to travel all over the world with such speed, and people are traveling around all the time, you know, and, and with their vehicles, and knowledge is increasing. You say, well, see, that proves evolution because knowledge has increased. No, actually, that proves the exact opposite. People are getting worse. And uh, for those people out there that worship knowledge, they think things are getting better. But just because knowledge increases, it doesn't mean the person is getting better. Uh, you could memorize every Marvel comic that's ever come out, and it's not going to make you a better person. You would have knowledge, but uh, that doesn't mean that you're a good person. And um, I'm seeing this thing with online ministry, to be very frank with you. There's a lot of people that have lots of knowledge. They have seen and heard things that people, um, even 100 years ago, 50 years ago, uh, would never have known. And there's an incredible increase in knowledge. But a lot of that knowledge is not sound doctrine. A lot of it is false doctrine. And I'm having to deal more and more with people that have lots of false doctrine. And they're very knowledgeable in their false doctrines. And I know how to fight against these people, but um, the thing that happens is when I answer them according to the scriptures, then they're also learning, they have knowledge. There's a grouse, you heard that? Maybe saw it, I don't know, back in there. Um, but they're also, uh, they learn how to answer my rebukes of their system. <laughs> So it's kind of a weird situation. It's very cold, by the way, right now. It's down in the, uh, uh, I'd say probably high 20s, I think, is what was on the thermometer this morning here. Um, but uh, it's a chilly morning. That's why I have my shearling coat on. But um, getting back to the subject here, knowledge, an increase in knowledge is not, uh, it's not a good thing. Um, Eve, when she was in the Garden of Eden, the devil, devil gave her some new knowledge that she hadn't thought of before. Was it good or was it bad? It's bad. Uh, he can be as God's knowing good and evil. Well, she knew some things. She found out some things. And as a result, she died. She would have lived forever in that Garden of Eden had she not sinned. And then caused Adam to sin as well. And I believe he sinned because he saw that she was going to die and he didn't want her to die. And then not have his wife that he loved. And so he died with her. And it's a picture of Jesus Christ in the future that he died for his bride. Uh, Adam is called the first Adam and Jesus is actually referred to as the second Adam. And if you don't understand, if you're not saved, then you won't ever understand biblical typology and you'll make a mess of things. You'll come in and you'll say, well, it's, uh, you know, it's just ancient sun worship or something. And, you know, <laughs> that whole stupid movement. But um, <clears throat> let me read you a verse of scripture here from the New Testament. My little pocket Bible. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come... When they will, uh, 
They will not endorse sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves uh, teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Um, we're there. I can say that with all certainty. We are there. The time has come when they will not endorse sound doctrine. Uh, the vast majority of people do not watch my whole video. I had a comment years ago, put it in one of my font, funny comment videos, and this guy said that uh, watching a whole video of mine is a form of work salvation because it takes me over an hour to explain something. <laughs> uh, you can't endure an hour of preaching. Two hours of preaching on a very detailed subject, that's too much. But you can sit down and watch a Hollywood movie. Oh, I, I watched that movie. It was a really good one. I love the CGI uh, reality that it creates for me. Computer-generated images uh, is what that means. Um, for the older brethren out there that don't really care about that stuff. <laughs> uh, kind of like me. Um, but... It's, it blows my mind how people have so much knowledge about so many different things, and yet they can't endure sound doctrine. Um, you know, there's a verse in the book of Amos, we won't go to it, but where the Lord says about how he will send a famine in the land, not a thirst for water or, or uh, hunger for bread or whatever, but of hearing the words of the Lord, and they shall wander from sea to sea, from and things, I, I'm screwing the verse all up. My little pocket Bible here does not have the actual verse. But uh, people are going to go everywhere trying to find the word of the Lord and they won't find it. Um, this has been a, a great struggle for me. Because uh, when I first got saved, um, I got saved from a couple of different ministries and... and um, you know, I was a professing Christian, and I th I had thought, you know, well, I'm a Christian, I'm I'm saved and whatever. But as I started to see truth that I'd never seen before growing up in my church building, I started to realize, you know what? I don't know if it took with me. I don't know if I'm if I'm real. I think I've just been faking this the whole time. I better make sure. And uh, so, asked the Lord to save me, and and um, and He did. And he gave me this extreme desire for truth, which is what will happen when you genuinely get saved. It's the first initial sign. Uh, when the Holy Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. The Bible talks about that. So you'll have this real strong desire for truth. Just, oh, I have to know this. and I, I wonder about that and whatever. And you will get grounded in sound doctrine. And once you are grounded in that sound doctrine, um, you won't depart from it, okay? Uh, and there will be times that you realize that some doctrines you learned early on were wrong and you have to change, but the core teachings of Scripture, um, you're not going to change. You're going to say, uh, yeah, I, I understand that, you know, like the fundamentals of the faith, you know, the, the deity of Jesus Christ and the blood atonement and things like that. You're, you're not going to the virgin birth, you know, you won't change on those, okay? Uh, belief in the King James Bible. Of course, that's pretty important if you want sound doctrine. You need to have a book to get your doctrine from that you don't question and you believe it's actually God's book. But, um, you know, when you get the sound doctrine, you get grounded in that. Um, you will start to move in a direction where you'll see a lot of the error out there and whatever else, and these people getting into the thing of knowledge. And um, getting back to the the ministry here, got a little sidetracked there, my dog just ran by. What's that noise? Uh, but I got saved, and I started going to Baptist churches because I thought, well, they use the King James Bible. Little did I know that um, you could use something without believing it which I found out uh, from quite a few of these Baptist hirelings. And I wanted to help out. I thought, okay, the Lord saved me. I want to, you know, get people saved and you know, help out with preaching sound doctrine and things. And, and I did preach in church buildings. 
Um, and, you know, I had hands laid on me that, you know, basically ordained me for ministry. And uh, I filled in for pastors and, and um, so, you know, I was in these church buildings, but I kept seeing the same problems over and over again, which if you've spent any time in church buildings, you know what those problems are. And those problems are uh, the social clickiness of the church building, all of the different things that people get themselves into, um, where you have, uh, we have to, you know, have somebody volunteer to, um, you know, mow the yard and clean the church and all the other stuff in nursery. And, and then you have people fighting and all this infighting and jealousy and, you know, all the stuff that goes along with church buildings. And I thought, you know, I'm going to a church here and there's about 200 people, maybe 300 people, some of the bigger ones I went to. I was never in one that had thousands of people because you really have problems when you get into that level. And, you know, usually it was less than 100 people, sometimes less than 50 people in the churches I went to. And, you know, again, I thought, uh, there's a real need to get the truth out there. And I'd like to do that. And that's why I started King James Video Ministries. Because these churches, they just weren't willing to really stand up and, and take good stands on things. And so I started the King, you know, King James Video Ministries. And at first it was DVDs that I was selling. I sold through uh, Gail Ripplinger. She was selling some of my DVDs. I contacted a number of other places. They didn't want to sell them. And then it was, you know, get a website, start selling on my own. Okay, I can do that. And, you know, it grew to the point where, uh, you know, I was told about YouTube. Hey, you know, go check out YouTube. I did. Okay, I can put my stuff on here for free. And people can watch my videos for free. And uh, that was... You know, 2008, I joined YouTube, but I wasn't really putting out much stuff until 2009. And then 2010, it was more, and it, it increased with time. And uh, so, long story short, um, here I am all these years later. And I've done my very best to try to teach people sound doctrine. And, um, and you know, again, like it said in Daniel... Uh, chapter 12 there about how that the um, people that are not wise they they won't understand and the people that are wise they'll understand and so uh, a lot of the people out there that watch this channel they're not very wise some of you are very wise you're born again you're saved um, but there's a lot of lost people that watch this channel and they don't understand um, a lot of what I'm saying here but I can see it getting to the point, and I'll be covering this in another video, of the internet basically being destroyed and not a place for the truth anymore. And um, the internet is never, you know, I can't say, uh, oh, the internet's some holy place where it's just wonderful and things to be here. No, it's been pretty miserable being on YouTube uh, with all the arguments and people attacking me and trying to go after me and everything. Um, that's been rough over the years, having to go through that. Uh, but I'm wondering about the future. Very much wondering about the future. Because in any kind of a market, you have the thing of saturation, where you have uh, a product that's available. And you bring out the product, you're one of the early ones that brings out the product, and then a whole bunch of competition comes along because they see it's doing well and they you know put out stuff to compete with you well eventually you have market saturation where there's just so much knowledge and it covers up the sound doctrine um i think for a while uh god allowed the church building thing to go on in the 1800s going up into the 1900s but then it just got to the point of market saturation every town has a church and um, the people had their heads filled with knowledge, but not a whole lot of sound doctrine. And uh, all the gossip, church gossip and everything else, oh, 
It's all part of knowledge, but it's not sound doctrine. If you see what I'm saying here. Um, and I see that same thing happening with uh, the internet right now and online ministry. Um, it gets very wearying. You know, I get people and they say, you can't prove that Jesus is God. Uh, well, actually, I have, you know, several studies, years worth of research, all of this different stuff to prove that Jesus is God. Well, he never claimed to be God. Yes, he did. I can, I've proved it in video. Well, you can't prove it. You have to write it to me here in the comments section. I want to argue with you. Uh, no. But see, that's where things are heading. And so what's the future? Brethren, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I mean, I, I understand from the scriptures what the future is, you know, that there would come a falling away and that uh, what I read to you there in Second Timothy chapter 4. But um, you get to the end of the church age, if you want to call it that, and um, you have John on the Isle of Patmos by himself. John's not in regular uh, weekly fellowship with the brethren at his local church. Okay, um, he's there and he's got spider web on the lens. He's there and he's by himself when the Lord catches him up to heaven. Um, doesn't say a whole lot for our future, does it? Um, you know, again, I've, I've thought of different ways. How can I get to more people? How can I actually speak to real people? I've met some of you in person. You'll see me out someplace and you say, hey, Brother Brian, you know, we talk and have a little time to speak there, but usually you're on your way to work or you're doing this or that and I'm doing some other thing. I'm busy. Can't exactly, you know, study the scriptures together or sing a hymn or something. But, um, I mean, how do we go forward? is my question and um, but watch out for this thing of knowledge versus sound doctrine you're supposed to be grounded in the scriptures and um, you know there's still time if you say well I'm just brand new saved or just recently was born again well you can study on my channel I will answer a lot of the questions that will come up um, and you aren't going to find many channels like this one. Uh, a lot of them, unfortunately, they're parroting what they've learned and, and whatever. Most of my material is what the Lord has shown me from the scriptures, and I'm not parroting anybody. And if I do quote somebody or learn, say I learned this from so-and-so, I will tell the name. I have always named names, given credit where credit is due. I don't take people's material. But there's a lot of other King James only type of uh, content on YouTube, especially where they take other people's um, materials, thereby proving my point. Knowledge increases. You can increase your knowledge. You can study uh, King James only type of preachers and you can regurgitate. You know, I like to call some of these guys out there Ruckman regurgitators. They go to PBI, Pensacola Bible Institute, and uh, they come out just repeating what they learned from Peter Ruckman. And then when they come out with something on their own, it's just complete total heresy. And um, a lot of them, they're so messed up on their salvation. You know, their testimony is terrible. I don't even think that they're saved, but they have knowledge. So <laughs> I could keep ranting on this about this thing for a long time. Because it's something I'm very passionate about. Something I'm very... It's very upsetting to me. But um, all things uh, come and go. Um, there isn't anything on this earth that is permanent. Uh, in terms of lasting for thousands of years. Um, unless you're dealing with the word of God. Heaven and earth, earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So... But I'm gonna, I have a few more videos to do here, so I'll stop this recording, I guess, here. But um, make sure that you are increasing your sound doctrine, that you can endure sound doctrine. Um, 
Search the scriptures, study the scriptures, get a King James Bible paper one that you can look it up. I don't trust anything online. I really don't. But uh, look up the scriptures. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. All right? And um, be grounded in the scriptures. And uh, be very careful in the comments section um, of my channel. And uh, I'll just say this. The subscribers on this channel are really going up because I've been very active and I've hit a few uh, chords, so to speak, and gotten some people very angry as a result. And um, and some spirits angry as well, if you know which one I'm talking about. Uh, and so the channel's growing very fast. And a lot of people say, well, that's a good thing. Talk about that in the next video, why I think it isn't a good thing. So that is going to be it. And um, thank you to everybody out there for viewing my videos over the years and your support. And I uh, will see you in upcoming videos.